Welcome back to my Commodore 64 memories videos. This is where I look at old Commodore 64 software and some of the technical details behind them. Today we have Defender, published in 1983 by Atarisoft, coded by Joe Simcoe. This is of course a conversion of the classic Williams Arcade, also by the same name, Defender, which was I think published in 1980. There are uh, maybe two or three different versions of Defender that got released by different companies at different times uh, on the Commodore 64, but I think, in my view anyway, that this is probably the most accurate arcade conversion on the Commodore 64. So let's have a look in C64 Debug GUI in this version first. We can see what looks potentially like a multiplexer kicking in. So we have a sprite for the uh, scrolling status display up at the top. But then once that sprite has completed rendering, look, another sprite comes into view down at the bottom for one of the humanoids. I'm just flying around trying to find a good point in the game where I can pause. There we go. I'm remembering to use the hotkeys this time, so F10 is pause, F11 is resume, which is a lot better than trying to click those darn buttons. There we go. This looks like a good frame, right? So let's use the raster targeting cursor to scroll up and down the screen. And, ah, uh, yes, look, this is definitely conclusively some kind of multiplexer kicking in there. As I move the targeting cursor down the screen, we could see it was rendering the next bunch of sprites. So going starting from the top, yep, it looks like a very efficient multiplexer as well. It looks like the kind of multiplexer that updates the sprite uh, just after it's completed rendering the sprite, which is the most efficient way of doing it. It's probably the way of reducing any kind of flickering that goes on with sprite multiplexer updates, because you don't need to worry so much about when the sprite register updates need to occur above the sprite, you can just do it just below and then everything sorts itself out quite nicely. I've gone over this in quite some detail in my other videos about how to write a sprite multiplexer. So looking at the assembly output, I can see what looks like the Y register is being primed to look up into all sorts of tables to update the VIC chip hardware sprite registers. And Y comes from memory location 4581,X. So let's have a look at memory location 4581. Okay, well, we've got a whole bunch of FFs, but in the middle of these FFs, we've got a table of unique values. I don't see any duplicate values in there. So this tells me that it's potentially like an index table. And if I advance the frames, paying close attention to that table at 4581. Seems to match up, right? There are 15 entries, 14 maybe, and that seems to match up with the number of active sprites. So as I move, as I allow the frames to progress, look, this table, okay, so zero looks like a fill value for the end of the table. Uh, and that's probably because of the way that it's just sorting the indices in this table and, and zero is left as a trailing value, I expect. But yeah, it looks like that when there are fewer sprites on the screen, it looks like that index table gets shorter. So yeah, this looks like a very efficient sprite multiplexer, doesn't it? Well, that's, that's a nice uh, surprise to find in actually quite such an old game. There is, I think, a raster split in the, just underneath the score panel area there has to be right if it's fine pixel scrolling and the score panel is using characters not sprites because we don't see any red bounding boxes from the c64 debug GUI so th ah there we go so yes the the debug window here debug view doesn't uh, show the results of the raster split like the real uh, emulated view in the top right hand corner it just shows the the view of the screen with the current app this cycle at this particular point on the targeting cursor crosshairs point on the screen with the uh, scroll value. So yes, we can see quite clearly that there is an update of the uh, fine pixel horizontal scroll register there at D016, just in the right hand portion of the border. So yes, we've got a nice little screen split there as well, just below the score panel.
So now we are in ICU 64 with Vice Emulator and we can see the graphics map there with the debug view, but the sprites. So we can see that there aren't any, I don't think there are any uh, dynamic sprites going on. Ooh, there aren't that many sprite frames, to be honest. Gosh, this game is so difficult. Me with my old reflexes really cannot cope with the fast pace of this game anymore. So let's see if we can find the uh, text screen. Where is it? Where is the text? Well, that looks like the text screen there. It's uh, 3C00. Looks like there's some ranged reads going on in the lower part of memory there. Those, those green offset stripes, upper part of memory and the memory debug view. And those green stripes seem to move left and right as the game level scrolls left and right. Let's save that as a snapshot. And if you've watched my videos before, then you probably guess what I'm going to do with this snapshot. I'm going to load it into Charpad this time and see if we can find where the game is reading that map from. So where's the character set again? Ah, yes, that's right. The character set is at 800 in hex, which is basically at the start, <laughs> basically, basically at the start of basic memory uh, in the default configuration at power on with Commodore 64. It's 2048 in decimal, but 800 in hex. But yeah, I'm just having a look at the debug window here. Yeah, that's definitely in the uh, in in the earlier state, earlier parts of memory, right, where it's doing those ranged reads. Uh, it's it's not quite 256 bytes wide, and that's be, and that's very evident in the fact that these green read lines in the memory debug view are kind of like offset. Uh, they are at a gradient rather than straight down the window. So we're not going to start from 256 byte wide map. We're going to use a smaller value, I think, and then search upwards. Let's, in the map editor here in Charpad, let's zoom out so that we can see a rather large chunk of memory, right? And then we'll just import the data from a vice snapshot. We open the snapshot. We look for defender.bsf. There it is. The character set was at 800 in hex, so that's a good starting point. Let's make uh, the map height uh, quite large, so that when we're scanning through, we can see as many rows as possible in the map data. Right, now let's just make this number larger and larger until we find a magic map width size that it was reading through the memory as, and I think we can start to see the game level, the mountains in the background, start to come on into the memory view there. Let's increase the map width a bit more. It's not making sense, but it's it's somewhat, if we keep on increasing the value, I think we'll find it. But let's move the memory offset up a little bit so that at least the mountains will display uh, near the top of the screen. It's not down, is it? It's up. Let's keep on scanning up until we can find a value. Almost there, I think. There we go. So the map width is 136 bytes or characters and we can move the move the start of the map data in memory up and down and then we can try and find well there isn't too much in the upper portion of the game screen right we have a maximum of, of 25 rows on the screen and of course it's going to be a little bit shorter as well because there's the score panel up at the top of the screen and the status radar thing so there we go there's the memory for the mountain range, the level in the background. Uh, quite nice and quick and simple. So yes, I really like this game. It has a really efficient early example of a really efficient multiplexer. Uh, has a nice little screen split. It's got some nice sprites in there and it's got a nice fast background screen scroll as well going on. Uh, the bullets, right, are interesting from the player's point of view. But this game, uh, I noticed, differs quite significantly in implementation to the arcade game. So when I look through the PCB, uh, the, the schematics basically, for the arcade machine, uh, I see quite a lot of logic to do with uh, a large amount of, relatively a large amount of RAM for screen display, but I don't see any sprite logic, a hardware sprite logic, uh, going on in the schematic for the game. But what I did notice when I was looking through the source code for this game, because we're quite lucky that we have the original source code for Defender, I noticed that there is this uh, cough 
function, C-O-F-F, which is uh, just above the block clear function. And then the C writ or C write function, if you like, write an object to screen. So the original arcade version of Defender doesn't have hardware sprite logic. It actually updates all of its sprites using software sprites, just basically writing and restoring the information from its, at the time, a relatively large amount of RAM dedicated to displaying a colorful screen. And we can verify this as well by looking into the main driver for the Williams video uh, emulation for Defender specifically. And there we go, Defender simply draw graphics into the frame buffer. So the Commodore 64 having hardware sprites makes best use of its hardware sprites in this game by having uh, most of the game objects you know, update with its hardware sprites. Whereas on the arcade machine, it just uses software sprites, which I think is a, an interesting uh, implementation no, uh, point. Uh, the Commodore 64 gets its speed from using the uh, available hardware that it has, whereas the arcade machine uh, gets its speed from uh, heav heavily optimized uh, frame buffer drawing. So the last thing to look at, I think, is probably how these player bullets are set up. So let's, well, there we go. Let's zoom in to the character set view there. And we can see even when the player is not shooting, there are two streams of uh, independent streams for the bullets from the player updating into the character set. So the game is using dynamic character set updates to animate the bullets even when you're not shooting bullets, it's still doing that animation routine. That kind of helps to keep the frame time consistent, um, I guess. Uh, notice that there are two rows of bullets. And as I move the player up and down, look, it kind of like caches, if you like, a particular horizontal row. So obviously the characters on the Commodore 64 are on a strict 8x8 pixel grid, or 4 pixels by 8 pixels grid if you're in multicolor mode. So to get the nice uh, pixel accurate row offset for as the game is drawing, it has those two dynamically updated character set chunks uh, with different Y pixel offset within the character itself. We can see as well that when we scroll that there's no color RAM updates going on at all for the main game area. There are color RAM updates going on for this flashing score display and stuff like that, but yeah, there's, there's nothing going on in the scrolling game area. So yeah, there we go. I think that covers everything in this game. A very nice early example of a very nice efficient sprite multiplexer with some kind of index-based sort going on, uh, dynamic character-based updates, and also a nice little screen split going on up there and screen scrolling. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are always very much appreciated. Take care, have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.